Hi friends, my name is Esther Cottrell and I'm the state pastor for Ohio here at COGO Ministries, which is an acronym for Church of God Ohio. And I'm so glad you, you stopped by to look at a video uh, about church administration. And, uh, and today we wanna talk a little bit about the productive board meetings. Now I know you are probably like me. You didn't feel a call of God to go in to sit in two hour board meetings week after week after week. You felt the call of God to be a minister, to be in ministry. But nevertheless, part of ministry is working with others and helping them be, uh, be on, on board as well uh, with the ministry that you have. And board meetings are one of those ways we can make that happen. So how do we make those events productive? Now, if you are like many, my, uh, m like my first boss, uh, he said this. He said, my first board meeting was my first board meeting, meaning that he had never been to a church board meeting before becoming the pastor of that church. And so everything was brand new to him. He did not know how to be a board member, let alone how to lead a board. And, uh, and so... He was starting from scratch. Maybe that's your story as well. Well, I want you to know that board meetings can be productive and they can work on your behalf as well to help you move your ministry forward. So in the next few minutes, let's, uh, let's look at some basic concepts of what a productive board meeting looks like and some basic steps to get you there. Uh, one of the first things to remember, basics of a meeting, is that you should have an agenda. And you should follow that agenda. It's amazing to me that uh, sometimes the reason that we're meeting is because it's the fourth Tuesday of the month and the bylaws say we should meet. We have no idea why we're there, but hey, since we're here, what are we going to talk about? That is not a productive meeting, but rather uh, a productive meeting gives you an opportunity when you know where you're going to go and you have a purpose for that. So the second piece of the basics of a meeting is that there is an actual purpose for this uh, and that you are focused on the purpose for the meeting. Uh, and, uh, and there are two kinds of meetings, basically. There is the reactive meeting and there is the proactive meeting. Now the reactive meeting is, oh, hey guys, uh, the boiler went out and we've got to figure out what, how to fix that right away. That's a reactive meeting. And, uh, and there will be times when you will need to have reactive meetings. But for the most part, your, act, your, your productive meetings are those that are proactive meetings. In other words, you are looking at what is, but you're also looking to the future and saying, Where do, what are the goals, what is the mission of the church, and how can we help organize the work of the church to get us there? The second thing to keep in mind is that uh, is, is that your, the focus or purpose of the meeting is to remember that this is spiritual matters. Yes, even when you're talking about the money of the church, even when you're talking about that boiler that's burnt out, these are still spiritual matters. And we need to help our people learn that. Uh, in times past, we tried to divide the spiritual matters from the business matters of the church and we found that it really doesn't help you and in fact it helps it it redirects people from think understanding that everything is spiritual everything in the church is about the mission of the church so we need to be proactive but also focused on making sure that that meeting is a spiritual event even if you're talking about the boiler uh, and, uh, and another thing to, that will help you is to keep it time bound. I have been in meetings, perhaps you have too, that you're looking at the clock and you're realizing that it's now two hours, no, three hours, no, four hours. And, and the meeting doesn't look like it's coming to a conclusion. My opinion is if after two hours of a board meeting, quit boring. Okay, you know, you, you can get things done in two hours. If, it's, if you're having regular meetings, and most of us do, and where you have the monthly meeting, if you're having those monthly meetings, uh, then you don't need to go more than two hours unless it's an absolute emergency. And even then, you may need to say, okay, we need to assign somebody to look into this and get us some answers before we meet again. Two hours is plenty of time 
to deal with the issues at hand. And besides, uh, most people can only concentrate about two hours. That's about as long as they can go. If you go more than that, you need to give breaks to people. You need to have snacks for people. You need to make sure that they're comfortable. Again, remember, most of our meetings happen in the evening. So people are going to have to get up and go to work the next day. Give them a gift of some time. So keep those meetings down to two hours. Remember that you are working with volunteers. Well, as you, as you think about the basics of the meeting, do you have an agenda? Is there a focus for that? Is there a purpose for that? And is it time bound? Then the next thing I want you to know is that, uh, that there's three questions that I think will guide your agenda as you put that together. And by the way, you're probably putting that together with your chair. And I really do recommend that you work with your chair to create an agenda. Some of your chairs are highly organized and they can do that. Uh, and then they just report to you and you, and you report to them and, say, and organize it so that, uh, so that you're both happy with the agenda. On the other hand, you may, have an, you may have a chair that doesn't understand how to put an agenda together and you're going to need to teach them as well even as you, as you learn. Um, but with the agenda, think about this. Um, begin with the most important things. So you ask the question, what must be shared in this meeting? There are things that must be shared. I think, first of all, facts must be shared. If you're dealing with a problem, you want the facts to be shared. You also need to have the reports shared. What did we do before and has that been accomplished and how will we move forward? Those are things that must be shared. Um, and in addition to what must be shared, I really believe that because it is a spiritual event, you want to spend some time with your team and pray with them. Have a focused devotional thought. Uh, now, a, a devotion is not a sermon, but a devotional thought that will focus on the mission of the church, focus on the goals of the church. I also believe what must be shared is a story. If you have a story where, the, where some of the goals of the church, some of the mission of the church has been met in the last month, share that story. People are far more engaged and far more interested in being part of your board and being on the board of the, at your church if they think that it makes a difference. Can you show where it's made a difference, their work is making a difference and the church is making a difference? Share a story. I think these are things that must be shared. Another thing that must be shared are those big rocks, the problems, or the opportunities that are before you. Uh, so be ready to lay that out in those facts um, and, uh, and he, or have someone else ready to lay those out and explain that. And you want to work with your chair to also have some of what I think you should share, and that is recommendations. Don't just throw a problem out there for people to scratch their heads and say, well, we're just now seeing it. But if possible, give some recommendations. Have some things ready. You don't need to make the decisions, but you need to give the people some decisions that they can work from. They may come up with something better, but at least they're not starting from scratch. So be ready to lay out those recommendations. Uh, and you'll want to work with your chair again. I want to say that. Always work with your chair. Do not be trying to work against your chair, but work with your chair to lay out that agenda. And then the third question is, what do you want to share if time allows? Consider being able to share joys or, and good stories. Maybe even the question, how can we be more productive, folks? And of course, you want to end the meeting with when will we meet again and the assignments of people so that they know clearly what they need to do. Well, that's kind of the essence of what uh, a productive board meeting looks like. Thanks so much for stopping by and, uh, 
And I hope this is helpful for you. And if you have any more questions, be delighted to have a conversation with you. Again, this is Esther Cottrell, and I'm the state pastor in Ohio. God bless you. Bye now.